welcome to the last Sunday in Trinity and this is also known as Bible Sunday and I'm wearing my robes and I'm reading from the lectern and I should be speaking from the pulpit and you will discover why as I read Nehemiah chapter 8. In October when the Israelites had settled in their towns all the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square just inside the water gate they asked Ezra, the scribe, to bring up the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given for Israel to obey. So on October the 8th, Ezra the priest brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for the occasion, and to his right stood thirteen of his Levites. Ezra stood on the platform in full view of all the people. When they saw him open the book, they all rose to their feet. Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen, Amen, as they lifted their hands. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The other Levites then instructed the people in the law while everyone remained in their places. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't mourn or weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks, and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord, don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Levites too quieted the people, telling them, Hush, don't weep, for this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal, to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy, because they had heard God's words and understood them. Once I had a lady who I shook hands with at the door and she said, short and sharp, that's the best. And we all knew what she meant. It was the sermon. A lot of people have that view. Short and sharp. Well, that's all very well if it finds a place in the heart quickly. But to find a place in the heart quickly, there has to be knowledge already stored up in the mind. Sadly, that's not often the case. We have to sit with an idea to grasp it, don't we? Especially if it's new. Words have that kind of endothermic, slow burn effect within us. And they have their effect when we give them chance to dwell, we dwell with it. So is it short and sharp? Or is it hit and run? That's my question. I'm up in the pulpit because these exiles returned from Babylon, rebuilding the temple with Ezra the priest, one of my favourite heroes, priest scribe, who helped them rebuild the temple and who probably organised and edited the Old Testament and collected together the Psalms and structured them for use in the, as worship in the newly rebuilt temple. Ezra, along with Nehemiah, who took on the political role, came back and helped build the defensive walls of the city. And the people kind of felt that they'd done the temple and they'd built the walls, but they wanted more. They wanted somehow to restore that sense of identity, the covenant relationship they'd had with God. 
Now what better than to dig out the words that God had given Moses in the old days, words that had been written and spoken and recited for generations. Six hours, they listened, they asked Ezra and his 13 Levite helpers to read the words of Moses and to explain them so that they understood it. Now this was men and women and children. Anyone who had understanding could hear and understand. Six hours. That was not short, short and sharp, was it? And when they read, they heard the words being read, and when they began to understand what they meant, they, they realised how far short they'd fallen from all the aspirations of those early days and of the commands of God and they wept. That is a totally appropriate response. Oh, for more weeping as we hear the word of God, as he touches our hearts. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This is no ordinary book. This, under the coaching of the Holy Spirit, is the word of God to you and me and to the world. So Ezra and his team, his Levite team, built this huge platform and they stood on it and they read and they probably took it in turns, who knows. And there were 13 more Levites maybe moving around, catching questions, helping people to understand. Well, people drew near to listen. And the team read and interpreted what they read. So it made sense, so that people could understand it. Now there was a three-way thing here going on here. There was Ezra and his Levite team reading and explaining, making sense of everything. And there was the people who had asked, they had a hunger to hear. They'd asked to have the word read to them. And they were attentive to what they heard. And they respected the whole event. They stood as he unzipped that scroll. And as they heard the words, so they worshipped God and they wept. In soft, responsive hearts. I bet God, God loved that. You know, they wept because they realised how far short they'd fallen, but Ezra and Nehemiah and, and the Levite team said, this is a holy moment. God has spoken. How holy was that moment of realisation about how far short they'd fallen? And yet, the Levite said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Go home. Party. God has spoken. It's a moment for celebration. Now there are two ways you can respond to realising you've fallen short or reading the word of God. You can read the word of God and just self-flagellate the whole time. So oh, I got it wrong. I'll never get it right. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Or you can deny that you ever get anything wrong. There are people like that. And refuse to hear the word of God. And both of those are positions. And they're wrong. Because they are totally self-preoccupied. The point of the Bible, the point of the word of God, the point of him bothering to speak to us at all, is that we might be restored. And so the people heard, they realised, they responded, and they were restored. Remember Peter? Peter who denied Jesus? He wept when he realised he'd fallen short of all that he'd hoped for himself. And then he had that 
amazing conversation with Jesus on the beach after his resurrection, after Jesus' resurrection. And he went on to be a brave church, early church leader. What a great example. We read the Bible to have our hearts touched, our minds renewed, our lives transformed. Now, it's not that easy a book, grant you, but it's not as big as you think. There are just a few themes that seem to be repeated over and over again over the millennia. So get a Bible if you've never really taken it seriously. Find a translation that gives you a sporting chance of understanding it. You, you know, whenever we open its pages, we jump cultures and continents and centuries. So find a translation, there are loads of them, and read it. Have a hunger to know what it says. Use different things to help you understand what it's saying. There are loads of them too, all accessible. What does it say? Ask yourself. What does it mean? What did the guys mean when they wrote it then? What were they saying? What's the flavour of this? And then ask, what does it mean for me? And go and obey it, whatever you understand. And if you weep, then weep. But then go party. Be obedient. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Wonderful promise in Jeremiah. Jeremiah says to the returning exiles, or God says through Jeremiah, if you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Seek me with your whole heart and you will find me.
I hope you caught the parallels between Ezra on his platform and me in the pulpit. The purpose of reading the Bible, lectern, is to know what it says. The purpose of preaching, pulpit, is to understand it. The purpose of it all is to connect with the God who wrote it. You may like to pause now for your own reflection and prayer. And so our special prayer for today. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.